Yo guys, what is up? It's Teach here coming at you again with another video over on Nightingale and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to run all of the sites of power. They're all pretty identical and I'm going to show you what you need because some people are having issues figuring out how to get inside of the gates like you see me looking at right now. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through all of that. So anyways, there is an order to them. A lot of people don't realize that. So Antiquitarian is the first one you're going to do. I want to say the gear score is 10 to get into that. Then you're going to move on to the Astrolabe, which I want to say is a 20 gear score. Then you'll be able to move into the Provisioner, which is a 30 gear score. Then you will move on to the Herbarium, which you can't even enter without a 40 gear score. And then you will finally move on to the Gloom, which is a 50 gear score. Now, what does gear score mean, right? So your gear score is in this corner right here. I guess it's a 40 gear score for the Gloom. But Anyways, what you can do is you can actually enter these sites once you have the right actual gear score. You cannot enter these sites before you have the right gear score. So just so you can see, I have the right gear score to enter, so I'm able to bypass that right there. And then you can actually fight the things on the inside. The reason that there is a gear score, by the way, is due to the fact that when you are inside of these kind of dungeon cave things, if you want to think of them that way, is because when you're inside of these things, they basically have enemies that are dependent they see how that one's level 30 right there you having a 20 overall gear score will get you killed inside of this so you need to have a little bit better of an overall score all of the dungeons are pretty identical though you're going to go downwards in order to fight them and uh, you kind of have to you know, slowly work your way because some of these things are very dangerous that guy right there never get close to that one that'll just end you fossilized and petrified ichor all right so we're gonna keep rolling down this hill um unfortunately for some reason inside of these like dungeons your person that you have with you seems to not be very clever um they never do the right thing at the right time and they always forget how to act so the general rule of thumb is go downhill and if you go downhill you'll be just fine um and we're gonna keep rolling so you want to make sure, see how I can avoid these things just by staying back. Let Helen kind of take care of what she can take care of. And then you can just wait till they're not immune. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. You can let your person take care of all the hard stuff while you kind of focus on the big guy in the back. Or you can kind of help him. The big rule is you want to just make sure you keep distance between you and that big dude in the back. He's the one that's going to hurt you. Really? How did that not hit you? Now you can res your person as many times as you need, by the way, so take your time. Um, and if you're doing like I am in third person, there is an offset, which is why you see me aiming off to the right hand side. How did I miss that one? Thank you. Um, so, and you just slowly work your way down the cave. And it's pretty easy. And this is how you unlock all of your realm cards, by the way. Essentially what you do is you get down to the main room, you're gonna fight an automation. Once you fight that automation, it's going to give you the opportunity. There's some more petrified ichor or a core, whatever you want to call it. And we're just going to keep rolling on our way down. Hello, petrified wood. And is that just wood down there? Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. So we're going to keep going and you kind of work your way to the very bottom and then you do the puzzle and the puzzle usually unlock some scary stuff so if you ever get a chance like you can see me doing right now to fire at things from above make sure you do that because you want to try and minimize because the hordes are what gets you in trouble normal fights aren't what gets you in trouble but the hordes will because when you got four or five of these things running at you and some are swinging swords some aren't you want to try and avoid that as much as possible so definitely use the height advantage because some of the towers you have to go up and some you have to go down Oh boy, this guy's got a big axe. So, notice how he's got a ton of health. We're going to go ahead and avoid him to the best of our ability, because he's very slow, but he does an insane amount of damage for that reason. So, we're going to go ahead and keep backing up and shooting. Helen's going to try and kill him, which is great and all, but she can't. She doesn't even hit him, it seems. Uh, notice how I'm aiming, because I'm in third person, a little bit to the right. That does the trick for actually hitting headshot, by the way. There we go. Okay. He has got to be okay. He's beneath half now. Okay. What? Did he like fall? Yeah, he fell. That's what it is. He gets angry. Okay. He's in speed mode. Oh, did I just die? I think I died. Oh, I survived. Broke a leg though. Oh, this is bad. If you haven't had this happen to you yet, it sucks. 
when one of them knocks you around and it's just frustrating. There's not much you can do about it. You kind of just got to accept that you're going to have problems. Um, what I would do is I would get to a far corner and we're just doing the trot. We're just doing the trot. Where'd he go? Did he just like disappear? We have to take him out. All right, big fella, where'd you go? Now, if you have a greater potion, you can heal this technically, but I'm not going to bother right now. It's not worth it to me. Where'd he go? Did he like jump and die or something, maybe? I have no idea where he went. There he is. So you can, you can beat him. It's much easier to beat him when you don't have to hold still, by the way, just so you know. So there's an intermediate bounce layer and we take that win right there. There's some essence and all of the stuff we need. And we just keep slowly trotting our way down this, this dungeon. Um, you can go ahead and heal yourself by picking up some of your stuff. This doesn't prevent you from being healed. So take advantage of that as well. Go. All right. So even though we're slow, we can do this. Um, the biggest issue that we're going to have is towards the end when we have to fight the automation. That one, it does help a lot to be able to move, but you don't necessarily have to, if I'm being honest with you. Um, it will help a lot too, but you don't have to. All right, so you will, even if you die, by the way, you keep your weapons. The thing that you lose is your, anything that's in your inventory. So if there's something valuable in there, you will want to go and get it back, but you should be able to, you just got to go slow. So see this room down here? This is the automation room, and this is one of the hard ones just due to the fact that you're locked in this room with them essentially and so what i would suggest if you're like me and you're broken leg that you you should wait you should not do this until you have ability to move because fighting this guy without the ability to move is almost impossible because he'll chase you down and there's not really running from him so yeah definitely if you made the mistake like i did and got hurt uh, we'll wait it out i know it's frustrating but it's like let's go ahead and look at the cooldown of it broken leg there you go until it heals movement will be slowed so you've got about mm, five minutes would be my guess and once you get those five minutes done um it's it's definitely worth it so definitely just chill wait because all you have to do is hit this right here and you'll unlock the sight of power all right guys and now that we have waited out the leg all you have to do for all of these sites of powers are to activate the mechanism my biggest suggestion to you is get up into an area that you are less scared because he is going to spawn in and it's going to be that fabled automation night and he is going to do a lot of damage so my biggest suggestion is to shoot the crap out of him now just so you can see as long as you can hide a little bit, he doesn't really recognize you're in the actual fight. So I was able to get it so he didn't recognize I was here and he'll just sit there for a little bit. They do eventually get smart and uh, start moving or they aggro to your person. There he goes, there's two of them. Cool, great. All right, so we've got two of them that we're gonna deal with now. And we're just gonna sit up here and use this poke method. Um, basically, the reason we're doing this is due to the fact that we just don't want to take any damage. These things do an insane amount of damage, and they light you on fire as well, so that's not great, obviously, right? We want to avoid that, and notice how this guy... How did he... What? Is... is am I only seeing damage for one? Oh, yeah, I'm only seeing one of them. Okay, I was very confused. All right, so we're just going to keep chunking away at this one. See how he's just slowly going down our point? Because fighting two at the same time is almost impossible. Um, but you have to only fight one at a time when you're actually doing the other four dungeons. This is the hard one. The Doom or the Gloom one is the actual hard dungeon uh, because you have to fight two at the same time. Now, if you were down there, the solution is to rec uh, pick up your recruit. And uh, then once you're able to do that, you can kind of have them tank. So if I get down to one and he's about half health, I'll go down and show you that strategy. But right now, the safest thing that you can do is just avoid because these things will smoke you and they basically have line of sight on you which means that if they can see you they're doing damage to you which is not fun obviously um if you have a good axe you can kind of out damage them um and you can just go for the burst method i don't like the burst method um but that's mostly due to the fact that it's just it's risky because if they hit you with enough damage there's not much you can do all right so item is breaking we're gonna go ahead and repair that and uh, yeah, so the crossbow is one of the best things that you can use this game, by the way. At least early on until you get weaponry. I'm going to be using non 
non-crossbow as soon as I can. And this is why I'm doing this, because in order to get the next thing, you can see in my upper right corner that I've got to get the actual saw table. And then once I have that, I can unlock the next stuff for actually getting weaponry. So this is like doing these is the pre-gun phase. And then once you get all these boss fights done, you're actually able to do the gun phase. But notice how I'm just chipping away. As soon as we knock this guy down, we'll almost be where we want to be. And there goes that one. And now we can just sit up here and just smoke this one from above. Now I'm going to get him to about half and then I'll show you what you can do in order to actually fight these guys because you do a bunch more damage up close and personal with your axe and with your like balls if you have those. Um, you can technically do crit on him if you're able to get past the heart, um, but I am never able to actually hit the heart so I don't bother with it. Um, you can do other things in order to do damage on this by the way. You don't just have to shoot uh, like I am right now. You can do a whole bunch of different steps, right? gonna go ahead and take a picture of that but yep so this is the one you can choose by just sitting up here um the other ones i usually just run around the the area because you only have to fight one of them but with two of them it's very difficult to justify trying to go through uh the whole process and we're almost there i'm just chunking away we've got 54 marbles left and it'll always give you that update in the bottom right by the way which is very nice and he's almost half. You know, I'm gonna take him down to a quarter before I go down there with him because these level 30 ones are gonna smoke my health. I don't really wanna deal with that right now. <laughs> so before you go down there, also notice how I don't have any food boosts and my energy isn't super high. We wanna make sure we change that before we go fight him because if you're running and you run out of steam, this guy will burn you and there's not much you can do about it. You, he's almost at quarter. So. Notice how we're doing 60 damage a swing, um, but with an axe or the axe that you would need in order to do good damage to him, um, you can actually get away with just using an axe because it's going to do 160 a swing. All right, so now before we go down there, we're going to go ahead and pop our items. Wait, wait why are you not going to eat? Thank you. Okay, I was like, what is going on here? Go ahead and pop all of this. All right, so now we've got some stamina. We're gonna go ahead and see how he instantly like teleports to you and lights you on fire. Yeah, not fun. So we're gonna go ahead and get Helen up. Helen will do some damage. You can kind of avoid and dodge, but again, see how, oh man, that hurts. That's why we want to run. We're gonna go ahead and move. Hey buddy. If you can hit him when that thing goes red, by the way, that's how you do the bonus damage to him. Um, but if not, you can kind of just dodge like I am right now and use the poles to your advantage because the poles will save your life okay seriously there we go she is injured already we're just gonna go ahead and go for the kill on him there we go just like that all right now we'll go ahead and pick up Helen hi Helen then notice how we've defeated this thing right here and that's it so it's pretty much the exact same strategy for all of those um, the boss arenas. And see so yeah, how we got that gloom card now. Complete the gloom side of power and we are good to go. Doom and gloom. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of like the hard part of this one. You can go around and move if you want to. It seems like I missed. You can hear the actual like whatever you want to call it. Um, usually that means you missed a hope and those hopes are valuable because they can unlock recipes and random things for you so definitely go try and get those i can hear it i just don't know where it is sounds like it's up here maybe i'm wrong oh well but if i can't find it i don't care too much um but what you can do just so you're aware if you haven't used the teleport option before you can travel to your respite and uh, it'll bring you back to your base immediately big advantage so anyways hopefully this video helps you out and other than that teach